The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 12th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes. Yeah, sort of Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So during this next hour, during this next hour, give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, let those fingers do the walking. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And inside the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow off 36 points. S&P down about five. NASDAQ 100 off 33. Russell 2000 slightly positive. The transports are up 43 points gold's up four bucks so we got mixed markets out here leading the charge to the upside i believe ahead of earnings is mercado libre up 17 bucks beyond meat up 16 chipotle up 12 to the downside it's dave and busters down 22 percent 12 million shares that's 11 bucks and change uh, also booking holdings not really a big deal. Six tenths of a percent down 11 bucks. Lamb Research off 10 bucks. That's 5%. So, certainly things to look at. Um, but of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So, there are two things. My apology for not being here yesterday. I could not persevere. Woke up with just the crud. And uh, so, um, the crud is cruddy, and it just simply had me down for the day. But hey, I did persevere, and we are back here today. By the way, I will not be able to do the shows tomorrow and Friday, hopefully not because of crud, but for other reasons out there. So, uh, happy Father's Day to uh, early happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. So, anyways, let's get to the market. Now, yesterday there were a couple of emails that came in, different email addresses, but in essence, it was the same question out there. And uh, and so the question was, doesn't the market, stock market, need for the Fed to reduce? I'm paraphrasing, but basically the questions were the same. Doesn't the uh, Fed need to reduce rates in order for the markets to continue higher? Now. Yesterday, being under the weather, basically being in the horizontal position most of the day, uh, while as, while everything was spinning, uh, in listening to the different uh, shows that were on out there, you, you would think I could understand why the question was coming in. Well, I was pouring in like that out there. The problem that I have with the folks, many of the folks that are on the financial news networks, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I understand the narrative that they push out there, um, but they, and hell is a place in Michigan, by the way, and since I am a ex-Michigander, I can say that word because it's a spot on a map. I just don't want you to get caught in hell, Michigan, or any other kind of, you know what I mean out there. I mean, to me, to me, it's just about the facts. It's just about the facts. If we take a look at interest rates here, at the top portion of the chart, just the 13-month T-bill, so you can see what short-term interest rates are doing. The green arrows going from lower left to upper right are when rates are rising. And then if you go down, and this takes us back in the 1993 time period, so it's not like I'm just using, you know, some type of you know, something to prove the point. The point is sitting right here in front of us. Markets rise. The S&P 500 will rise as interest rates are rising. They always have, 
They always will. So no, the BS, the information before Steve shared with you this chart is just that. It is a bunch of BS. Interest rates rising are good for the stock market. They, and when interest rates are coming down and they're falling, it's not good for the stock market in general out there. So this goes back to 1993. That's more than 25 years worth of data that you and I can look at and we can compare short-term rates with what takes place in the S&P 500. So don't listen to the garbage that is being fed to everybody out here about the markets and what the Fed must or must not do in order for these markets to continue to move higher. So hopefully we have put that to bed. Another question that came in, this came in here this morning, was just kind of my thoughts on, um, on gold and whether or not there will be some type of flush out to the downside. So to begin that here, uh, I always like to look at, hey, what's price doing? What is gold doing? Now, this is a continuous contract for price, and the green lines and the red lines are the horizontal trading ranges. Uh, and we're looking at a weekly chart, by the way, for gold. And what we can see out here, and it's very clear, that at the 1359 level, uh, that has been significant resistance. That is a weekly horizontal trading range. And for all intents and purposes, since 2013, we'll go back to Octoberish of 2013, with the exception of one week, and that week was March 10th, 2014. So with the exception of one week, as prices gotten up to that level, 1359, call it 1360, call it what you want out there, um, unless price gets over that level, that is resistance. It is significant resistance out there. So in asking the question, do we think that um, traders that are getting in late in the game to go long gold could be in trouble. The answer is self-evident, of course. Now, if price is able to take out that level, well, that now it's not really a consolidation pattern. We just simply know where the ceiling height is for the advance of gold out there. And um, um, and, and, and so that, that that's really it. Now, if you take a look at the daily time frame chart here for gold, we pull this over. What's interesting is that the last time that gold was up Oh, no, that's not it. I really want the weekly time frame. I wanted to stay with the weekly chart out here. So my my apology for that. Let me put the weekly time frame chart out here. And here, as we take a look at this on a weekly time frame, right up in that 1359 level is a very valid Gartley sell pattern. Now, that Gartley sell pattern turned into a bottom that formed in gold just using the TD setup nine count. It was bar number nine to the bar after bar number nine the day following, the week following, where there's actually just a slightly lower low out here. And um, so that if price is able to take out this Gartley sell pattern, that would be a close at 1360 on a weekly basis. Then what that says is that, hey, gold will slip up or could slip up or move up, whatever words it is you want to use, to the 1426 to the 1462 level out there. Now, look, the beauty about Goldilocks, really, if we take a look at it right now, is the following. If you look at yesterday, those of you that are traders of gold, and I wish I wasn't under the weather, but I was, price pulled right back to the place that you and I had identified, well, at least subscribers and I did, yesterday morning, 1323, the bottom of its daily profile, held as support. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, the last time that we were together, which was uh, Monday, yeah, today's only Wednesday, um, we were having some system problems. I wish I could remember all the ticker symbols that we were trying to access, but the last one that we were is is uh, is up on my screen, and it was a U U U U. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you, 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 you. And that's uh, Energy Fuels, Inc. And I believe that the individual was looking for a, a buy point in it. And because we had such a lack of information, I was unable to provide any kind of answer. I do have a clear answer now, though, um, now that I've got my system back up and, and running. So we can see the beautiful patterns. This is the daily time frame chart that uh, has formed at the most recent high and low, and as well uh, today or yesterday's high out there. And so the answer is no now is not in fact the time to buy but if you take a look at the high that formed out here on april the 9th it was the day following that set up nine count that was the high if we take a look at the bottom that formed out here this is on, uh, around may 31st uh, was that with that roads momentum indicator signal we love that hammer candle that formed uh, on that trading day and the following day getting above stevie's red line now price ran right up into resistance that's this solid green line out here it did that yesterday that was the high and then it sold off and so what you now have is a TD set up nine count so what this uh, suggests to both you and I is we're going to see a pullback inside energy fuel cells the target of targets are 284 to 275 284 is Stevie's red line that number will fall or should fall uh, as price moves lower, and then the 275 level is the top of the profile. Now, if price closes under 275, the sink can fall all the way back to 248. Uh, that's the bottom of its daily box out there. And actually, today, we'll set up the TD setup nine count, or should. I don't know what the end of the day is, but as long as price closes above the price point of 293, then today we'll we'll go ahead and qualify as a TD setup, and then price could pull back to the breakout area, and that's 250. So 250, 250, 275, 284. Those would be the numbers. 250 would be the uh, more ideal, excuse me, uh, buy out there. And that is for ticker symbol U U U U. 
Okay, let's go take a look at the markets, try to figure out what they are doing out here. We've had a lot of jostling around. Um, if we take a look at, if we take a look, what do we want to look at first to figure out what that jostling is uh, meaning to us? So you got the Russell's trading higher, the transports are trading higher. Any meaning there, I don't know. But if we do take a look at the spot volatility index, right now it's trading at 1596. 50-day exponential moving average is 1592. So closing below would be, we'll call it short term liquidity bullish and closing above short-term liquidity bearish out there we're so close to it we're so close to the 50-day that a penny or two i don't want to make too much of a big deal out of it it looks at this stage at the pullback that we're seeing over today and yesterday the the, the bit of a sell-off uh, yesterday is nothing more than just your garden variety retracement at this stage of the game now how will we know if it's going to be something more than the garden variety type of a pullback well the beauty is we should know this just simply by watching the dow equity futures contract the dow equity futures contract is in the process of trying to form a new profile i can't guarantee tomorrow that this profile will exist we're using stevie's advanced doppler system out here and sometimes like any type a storm out there you know it just needs to take hold and right now though you and i have a set of data numbers out here that can help us to identify and answer that question it's just a garden variety type of a pullback now it won't seem no matter what like a garden variety type of pullback if price pulls back to support support being the bottom of its box it may be hard to read out here but if you look at my data box in chart number three ym uh for the uh, june a 2019 contract out here, the bottom of that profile uh, is 25,785. 25,785. We're at 26,019 oh, right now. So 785, 885, 985, you know, we're over 200 points away. So any 200 point pullback, I can hear all the bears just licking their chops. Now, they may be able to lick their chops if price closes below the bottom of the profile we don't have that yet no other there are other daily profiles out here but it's the new one that is formed inside the dow that has piqued my curiosity and it's an equally weighted equally distributed uh, uh box out here because the center at 25 953 is basically very close to the top i mean it's it's, it's in between the top and the uh, center out here so really i think that's the data point to be watching for us to make a determination. That's assuming that the Dow equity futures contract pulls back to that level. If we take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart here for the Dow equity futures contract, we don't necessarily see that. We can see that price was moving lower, doing less relative energy, creating that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom out here. Um, and uh, but, but of course, price has to close about 26086 on a 30 minute time frame, although a new profile could easily form between now you know, in four o'clock in the afternoon, I just have to go with what I have right now. Um, but the signal here inside the Dow Equity Futures contract on a 30 minute basis is, a, you know, maybe not so fast out there. That's right. Not so fast. So that's what the in fact, there there is nothing else that I can find that um, we should use to make a determination as to what the market is doing. I, the NQ, you know, in essence, I don't, I, like, hey, its profile, no new profile, but the top of its daily box is 73.85. That's where price could most certainly pull back to. But here again, we've got price moving lower, doing with less relative energy out there. So we know that the bulls are attempting to try to form some type of bottom. It's very clear what they're doing on a short-term basis out here. You're trading, that's the NQ, you're trading above the daily profile, so there's really nothing wrong with that. If we pull over the daily time frame chart out here, uh, the only thing that is wrong with that is the mere fact that uh, yesterday, price was unable to, as it was the day before, close above 75.59 and a quarter. That's really a key level out here, 75.59 and a quarter. Um, that's the number you want to have on your pad of paper. We're at 74.75. If price closes above 75.59.25, last time I'll mention that number, uh, then you've got to move higher and likely all the way back to its highs out there. So the question is, is this an A to B equal CD to the downside? You do have the leaves falling off of the tree because that is a true doji candle from yesterday. Yesterday. Me and the open and the close were virtually the same price. That's what a doji is. Otherwise, if you get any kind of a body out there, it ain't a doji. It's a spinning top. It's basically nothing 
from a candlestick uh, standpoint. But yesterday was a doji. The Japanese expression is if you close lower, the, feet, the, the leaves are falling off the tree. They, how can they be falling off the tree? It's, it's, it's summertime now out here. It's a figure of speech, so to speak. And that figure of speech says, hey, price could easily pull back to Stevie's red line, 73.44 out there. So that's not out of the question. And that would just be your garden variety type of a uh, retracement inside of the NQ. And so I don't really see anything else. Uh, hey, how about the Russell 2000? What's its message out here? Well, the interesting thing here, and you can sort of see it on the daily chart. Here you'll see it on the 30-minute chart. Still hasn't taken out the lows of yesterday. The ES did, the NQ did, the Dow did, uh, but the uh, Russell 2000 has not done that. Sort of makes you say, hmm, something to think about. So as we speak right now, and we go into this next breakout here, Dow's off 41, S&P down 6, and we'll be right back. I want to hear from you. Give us a call at 877-927-6648 or email me, steve at tfnn.com. Just put radio show question inside that subject heading. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranked me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
So what do we want to go take a uh, look at? Lightspeed Crew. Let's go take a look at Lightspeed Crew. Now, we had gotten, the subscribers and I gotten into a trade, long Lightspeed Crew. We did that as a result of that TD setup nine count. Uh, that took place right here. That's on the uh, trading session of June the uh, 5th. I think we caught that on June the 6th when that pattern looked like it was going to confirm. And then what Price did was it ran right into Stevie's red line right here just a couple of trading days ago. So in uh, Price was unable to take that level out. Uh, it was just a trade. We went ahead and uh, closed that trade out because there's there's nothing worse than a uh, falling price oscillator below zero. And that's what that red line is really representative of. So you see price hit resistance. Now, it's very possible, as we put up light sweet crude out here, it's very possible that the first support, I don't think, has been taken out. No, it hasn't been. But we could anticipate that price was going to move down or should move down to the bottom of that new box. And that's exactly what it's done. That's at 51.51. The actual low so far today, 51.46. So for those looking to go long light sweet crude, I get it. Now would be the time. Um, I don't want to do that. You're, it would be just a trade at this stage here. Uh, because um, at this stage, we know where the range is, and that's going to be Stevie's red line, 53.73 versus 55.15 that you're looking at on this chart here, which is the top of that daily profile. You can see price never got up to the top of that profile, so it was really the test of Stevie's red line that was resistance. Now, if you can get price over the next couple of days, it won't be here tomorrow or Friday, but if you were to see price, and we'll just use 53.73 as the number uh, before it were to head lower, this uh, TD set up nine count low is still a valid low out here, and if price can close about 53.73, that says light sweet crude could run all the way up to the 62.78 area. So it's still a valid um, potential trade out there. I just hate a falling price oscillator below zero uh, when you got the message that we did just a couple of days ago. So now, of course, you would not at all want to take that trade on a close below 51.51. The truth is that would be the bottom of the box, but really it'd have to be a close below 50, 50, 60, 60 out there that would say, mm, nah, I don't think so. Now, the reason why, oh, okay, okay, yeah, that, that, so that, that's all that I've got on Light Sweet Crude. My apology uh, there. Now, I, I saw some uh, stuff inside the den about silver, you know, continuing to move lower. If we take a look at uh, silver out here, we look at the July contract, what we're going to see is that uh, so far, even though a couple days ago was a nasty day out here, price still above Stevie's red line here at 1463. So let's see, was there a new profile that formed inside of the silver contract? I don't know if there was. We're looking at it. No, but here's what we do know. We know Stevie's red line at 1463, at 1463, and yesterday there was a new daily profile that formed. Now, this new daily profile formed above the prior profile, so that is we'll call short-term bullish because the question was or is, will silver ever bottom? And so uh, now, look, it's trading within the profile, so the support level, 1450, to Stevie's red line at 14.63 out here. Um, of course, to close by 15.06, that would be the top of that daily profile would say, heck yes, that uh, silver has more room to run to the upside out here. Um, what else can Stevie find out about silver? So that's what the daily time frame. Out of curiosity, what's the weekly selling us? What is the weekly chart for silver communicating to you and I? You know, it just shows us that price pulled back that TD setup level. That's the red horizontal line on my screen. There was a slight close below that the week of May 17th, but right away the very next uh, trading, a uh, couple of trading days, price got over that level the week of May 24th. So that is a key level of support to be watching. Uh, that price point out there, by the way, is 1446. Um, so the weekly is saying, okay, pulled back to a breakout level. It's respected it. Price is trading on Stevie's red line. And on the monthly time frame chart, price is just above Stevie's red line out here. So, I, so what does that say? What does it say? What does it say out here? I'll tell you what silver says. What silver says is, hey, if it can close above 14, 1506 out there, uh, then you've got a uh, likely move higher in A to B equals CD to the upside. Of course, that 1506 would not be taking out the swing point. The swing point is actually priced at uh, 1515, but that would give you a price projection of 1551 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, the silver 
contract. So we looked at silver, we looked at gold, we looked at light sweet crude, uh, we've looked at the general markets. Ah, boy, oh boy, oh boy, what else is it that we can look at out here? What is it that we can look at? I don't know. Somebody pump me up with a question inside the Tiger's Den, will you? Um, yeah, get me headed in the right direction. Ruby, there must be something that you want out there for me to go take a look at. Um, in the meantime, wheat, wheat. Okay, Bill wants to go take a look at wheat. Bill, what's the current contract for wheat? Or what contract do you want me to look at? And that will make things even easier for me so we can look at the exact thing. Now, what I can do is I can put up Stevie's synthetic version of the contract. Uh, and then it won't really matter out there. Well, it sort of matters, maybe, uh, because, uh, but if we take a look at uh, that, he says that works. Okay, so let's do, but what is the current contract? Z, what, what is the current contract? Is it, is, is it December wheat that folks are taking a look at um, out there? Uh, nobody's, nobody is saying, nobody is saying, um, well, let's just, let's just simply go back to the. Here's what the current. Here's what the. Uh, here is what the. Uh, what Stevie's synthetic version of the contract. It shows, uh, Mr. Bill, that we're up above the top of its uh, profile, 522.60. So this looks like it wants to continue to run higher. It's above a weekly profile out here. Um, so, uh, I'm back. I'm back. It's okay. All right. Good. Okay. So uh, here, uh, Bill, we're looking at the perfect. We're looking at the same. Uh, we're looking at the July contract for wheat. We can see price above again the top of that profile out here. You know, if I were going to draw an A to B equals C D to the upside, this is what it would look like to me. This is this is what fits my eye. The A point down there on May 13th, the B point would be May 21st, and then the C point would be down here on May 23rd. There we go. So it looks like where um, uh, wheat is headed to 540.50, but the retracement there was less than a 0.382 retracement. You can see it's a 35% retracement. Maybe you can't see it. If we take a look at that, if we take a look at this, the re the, the, this would suggest to me that the, what wheat should do is make more than a one to one A to B equals CD to the upside. So either the 1.272 or the uh, 1.618 level would be the uh, target out there. Uh, the question is, can we go take a look at the December contract for corn? We will do that and we'll update you when we get back from this uh, break out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we're taking a look at or beginning to take a look at uh, corn just before we went to the break. And what we have up on our chart, we've got a daily time frame chart here for corn. And I'm actually multitasking as we speak. Um, that's OK. We can see, though, this yellow diagonal line. That was a trend line that was broken uh, back. It was a gap to the upside above that level back on May 28th. We can see prices consolidating now with inside its daily profile. That's between the 406 and 438 uh, level out here. As I take a look at um, the uh, daily, this is the continuous contract. I don't have the December contract uh, in order to be able to put that up on my screen. But we don't see any kind of a, a topping signal. Uh, if we take a look at the lows, you're only in wave number two, and that could really set up the A to B equals CD to the upside out here um, if the top, when the top of that profile gets taken out. Now, that would be setting up one huge move if that's the pattern that unfolds because we come all the way back here to May 13th or so when that bullish engulfing candle had formed, and we just take a look at the potential of the A to B equals CD pattern that's out here. You're looking at one heck of a move higher inside of corn, potentially. Uh, so maybe with all the flooding and everything else, uh, maybe that's the outcome. That is a more likely outcome with a uh, uh, price close above 438. That is the top of that uh, daily uh, box out there. Nothing in the weekly standpoint to provide us with any information. Here, even if I look at the continuous contract on a weekly, this suggests that what uh, price did back here as it was making its bottom in the uh, May timeframe was coming back and testing that support level established by the uh, breakout on a weekly basis that takes you all the way back to January of 2018 out there. So, uh, again, that's uh, utilizing these uh, key levels of uh, where breakouts begin, where breakdowns begin. Right now, we're taking a look at a breakout on a weekly basis for uh, corn. If we take a look at the monthly time frame, you're going to see nothing but just one gigantic, well, we pull it back farther, uh, one gigantic move uh, lower. And this really just shows the consolidation that is out here. So the nice thing is, is that truly is a consolidation. Let me do this. Uh, it's easier to see the consolidation patterns. I believe that it is. If I use this chart here, the back background. So let me just do that. We'll just put in the uh, continuous contract. Oh, apparently we've already looked at that. 
<laughs> it looks like I already have that uh, drawn in here. But let me put this back to the monthly. So there we go. Let's just extend the line just a tad. So you can see the clear consolidation inside of, um, I'd probably put it right about there, inside of uh, corn. So the beauty about this, John, this is John in the Tiger's Den who would ask, the question is what you and I know, what Dave Mason knows, is that should this consolidation get broken, then you've got a measured move price projection in the 565 level. That may take us up towards an A to B equal CD that we looked at out there. So price really right up near resistance, and if we can take that out, it should be a strong movement to the upside out there. That's what a corn looks like without being too corny, so to uh, speak, out there. Um, let me, uh, let me, let me, no, no other questions. Well, hold on. No, no questions that have come in. Wow. Very quiet. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, in any event, let's go find some things to look at. So Dave and Busters, let's go look at Dave and, oh no, no. Somebody asked me about something else, right? What was it? Oh, uh, Peter, what were you looking for? What were you looking for? What were you looking for? Uh, the ES Mini, I'd sort of really covered that, I think. Was that? But but still, you asked. You asked. I'll play the game. Here's when we take a look at the ES Mini. Here's what you probably should be uh, looking for. You should be looking for 2870 as a key level here. What what price did last Friday inside of the ES Mini was it closed above Stevie's green line. That's a 2870 number that I'm giving you now. That is really where this counter trend rally should have failed. Should have stopped right then and there. It didn't. And now the question, Peter, is on any kind of retracement, is price just pulling back to test that level? It's an ordinary thing to do, 2870. It's another nine points lower. So if you're long, I would say you would stay long through that uh, area, 2870. If you get a close below that, then it would signal to you and I, Peter, that it was a false breakout to the upside. Now, I would also use, Peter, I would really want to use the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract, its daily profile before making a decision whether this is your garden variety type of retracement, one that should be bought versus a change in trend. And so therefore, you really want to pay attention to the bottom of that box out there, 25,785. Because if, uh, if the ES Mini, in essence, has topped out, um, then what we're going to see is we're going to see key levels of support broken. So I would be watching with regard to the ES. That's what I would be uh, watching. What do we know also about the ES? We know that, you know, this thing may be, um, well, I don't know what it's going to do out here. As long as price on a daily basis stays above its red line, 2843. Uh, now, 2843, there will be people, that's 40 points, really, 37 points. And a lot of folks would just say that was it. The high was yesterday. No, you can't say that. It could just simply be pulling back to a, a key level of support. Now, uh, you might want to pick up on those 40 points should that happen. That I get out there because we really are in a trader's market. And the reality is those 40 points with regard to the ES Mini, well, those could happen. Let me get back to the daily time frame. I thought I used to have that right here. I don't. Oh, I do. Um, of course, the last few days have reduced what the average true range is, but still uh, the average true range is still 36 points. So that move that you and I just took a look at, coming back to test DB's red line, that's one day average move over the last 10 trading sessions. And if you take a look at the last three trading sessions, relatively uh, calm market, so to, uh, so to speak out there. So that's what I see, Peter, when I take a look at, um, when I take a look at uh, the ES Mini. Ruby, thank you. Uh, you want to take a look at uh, Platinum out here. So let's go do that. Let's take a look at the Platinum contract. I believe that is also July that we are trading out here. And uh, what are you doing with that, uh, Ruby? Are you in? Are you out? Is it short term, longer term? Uh, what is it that you're doing? Then we can uh, really focus on um, on the uh, chart patterns for those time frames. But if we do take a look at platinum, here's what we know at least at this stage of the game. When this is taken a look at, you just sold it. Okay, so you're trying to play this to the short side. So with regard to platinum, where's the danger in that? The danger in that would be, let me get rid of the swing point line out here. Um, would be what? What would it be? What would it be? Now, I don't know if that was a sale because you, you're you looking for an entry. Okay, so you're looking for a long entry. Okay, then then if that's the case out here, 
um, then what you're looking for, we can see that Stevie's red line, not to the tick, but the body of the candle, the true essence of price has acted as support. So that says 801.50, you're at 8.14 right now. So that'd be one level to look at. If you look at the daily profile out here, the blue the blue horizontal lines, you'll see that it's a bullish structured box. The bottom of that profile is 80170. So you got 80170, 80150, Stevie's red line. That's clear for me if you're looking for the entry point, that would be it on a pullback. Now close below that says eh, there may be some other issues, there may be some other problems. Now, I'm here to say that there may be some other problems. Period, Ruby. And that is if we take a look at the weekly chart just forget the instrument but we what we know is that price is trading below stevie's red line and it may just simply pull back to stevie's horizontal red line and that number is 776.70 watch the bottom of that profile ruby that will be the key to trading flat Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got the two-minute uh, wrap-up here. Again, I won't be able to uh, be with you tomorrow or Friday. So uh, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Uh, with regard to the markets, you know, what, what, to, what to watch, what, you know, um, I think that I think that you you, you watch watch today's close. The spot volatility index is trading at 15.92. The 50-day exponential moving average is 15.92. You can take a look at the advanced decline oscillator line for the New York Stock Exchange. Um, it's at 56.79. Its number. It's above zero. If you get the spot volatility index today to close below the 50-day. 
with that being above zero, says that uh, likely yesterday's move and today's move was nothing more than a two-day knee-jerk reaction out there. Now, you may call me a jerk tomorrow and say, well, that didn't pan out real well. I'm uh, just uh, sharing with you what the uh, likely uh, outcome would be. Whereas, if uh, the spot volatility index closes above 1592, um, then there may be more downside action. That downside action taking that advanced decline oscillator reading down towards the zero line out there. Um, watch the uh, watch the bottom of that uh, profile for the uh, Dow Equity futures contract. It's the only piece of information that we have available uh, to us out there. Um, anything else that we can see? Well, we know that the that the shorter term time frame charts, uh, the shorter term time frame charts are suggesting bottoming signals out here. The 30 minute we looked at so some of those have gone away um, you know we're just showing you one of the tools that I use that that just helps me to understand what the message of the markets is and for those time frames what the message of the markets are communicating to you and I you can see the two hour time frame you know shows some tops uh, so we've got tops on the two hour time frame bottoms on the 30 minute time frame out here it's very much like today's trading is it not yeah it is exactly like today's trading we've seen some pushes to the upside pushes to the downside so really just kind of consolidating and chugging sideways after what has been a, a very nice move higher and let's face it this is the es mini you see the es mini above 2911 what does that mean that means the gartley buy pattern that formed back here or completed on june 4th we'll get to outcome number four the old all-time highs at 2961 folks have a great wednesday thursday friday i'll be back with you on marvelous monday take care